Welcome back to the epic landscapes of Australia, where adventure awaits down every bush track in this vast and rugged terrain. This week, we're leaving behind the creature comforts of our caravan and seeking out some isolation on these pristine beaches only accessible by four-wheel drive. Swagging it up at a secluded beach camp, we couldn't have chosen a better place to review the latest addition to our ever-growing arsenal of video tech, the EcoFlow River 2 Max, making it all possible as our source of portable power. All right, guys, unboxing and gear review of the River 2 Max by EcoFlow and it's their portable edition. Now, caveats, we usually say this isn't a sponsored video, but they did send us one of these. So guess technically this is our first piece of sponsored content in some way. Not getting any money for this, they just sent us one of their products to test. So we're gonna see if this little thing here can actually make traveling and filming when we're off grid with the swag doable and power all our devices. What comes in the box with the River 2 Max? Well, pretty much just this, the EcoFlow, one solid battery management system. The only other thing that comes with it is this little box, which are its attachments for charging. So out of the box, it comes with a 12 volt car charger. So you can plug that into your car while you're driving. So on the way here, we had it on charge. So it's now at 99%, so it's really charged up. You can, if you're doing a lot of four-wheel driving, keep this thing pretty juiced up the whole way through just off your 12 volt. You've got your 240 volt charger. Now it's got a very fast charge system in it with the 240 volt. So you can charge this whole thing up to full in about an hour using the 240 volt. The third one would obviously be solar. Now the back of these ports have an XT60 port, which if you don't know what that is, join the club. I did a bit of research on it and unfortunately we couldn't get an adapter for our solar blanket which currently has an Anderson plug on it and I think you'll find in Australia that most solar blankets do have Anderson plugs. Now you can buy these online and you can also get them from EcoFlow and I'm sure if you bought one of their solar panels it would come pre-set up with one. However, because we weren't able to get our hands on one and didn't know about it beforehand, it's going to be a notable exception from this video. So the all important specs of the EcoFlow River 2 Max, it's about a thousand bucks. So it is a little bit exy for your everyday, you know, weekend traveler. However, if you're doing this all the time and you're investing in camera gear and so on, you can really easily justify being able to charge your devices. So the model we have has 512 watt hour battery capacity. It is a lithium battery with a new battery chemistry that they claim will last up to 10 years and have minimal loss of capacity during that time. After 10 years, you should still have around 80% of battery capacity, which is pretty impressive when you consider this lithium battery against other lithium batteries and monstrous when you consider this battery compared to your more traditional deep cycle batteries. So this thing weighs about six kilos, which isn't too bad if you are traveling like us and being a lithium battery, it is a lot lighter than a deep cycle alternative. And if you're traveling in a car or camping like we are now, six kilos really isn't anything to bring with you. However, if you are doing a lot more hikes and putting it in your backpack, just be mindful, six kilos is still six kilos. On the front of the device, it has around nine output ports ranging from USB to USB-C to 240 volt ones when the inverter's on, you've got your 12 volt outputs. So you can pretty much charge anything you would wanna charge off it in today's world using what comes out of the box without having to get adapters or anything like that, which is nice. So this thing will produce about 500 watts of power not using their X-Boost mode, which from my understanding is their internal inverter, and that'll bring it up to about a thousand watts. So you should be able to power 80 to 90% of the things you'd wanna power with the internal inverter, thousand watt inverter effectively. 
And if you are using things that are a lot more power intensive than that, I would suggest getting the model up from this, which has an internal X-Boost mode or inverter that powers you up to 1,600 watts. So just be mindful when you're ordering these things, the internal X-Boost or inverter does change depending on the size of power bank that you get. And the other thing is everything can be checked via their app. So if you've got it on charge in the car or you're running your devices and you want to know how much battery capacity is left or how much it's drawing, you can see all that on their app and see pretty much everything you'd want to know about the EcoFlow whilst you've got it wherever you've got it tucked away out of the elements, which is a really nice feature. You don't have to constantly go and keep checking and pressing the screen to see if it's running low or you know, if it's still on or anything like that. You can do everything from this bad boy whilst you're enjoying the beach. So now we've got the specs out the way, the most important test is actually using this to start charging some of our devices, which are very low on power. So we've got some drone batteries, we've got our camera batteries, we've got the FPV drone battery here, which is a 240 plug and does suck a lot of power. So let's see how it goes with that. And then also my phone. So all different connections here. This is gonna be a USB. So that's gonna go in the top here. So it's charging my phone currently pulling 10 watts of power, 12 watts of power, sorry. And available at this is 99 hours and 59 minutes. So just for charging a phone, we've got close to 100 hours. So we've got the camera batteries on charge. We're up to about 22 watts. Still saying that we've got 99 battery hours to go. So with these low wattage batteries like the camera ones and your phone it looks like it pulls very very little from this and would have no trouble powering it for a hundred hours effectively we've put on the fpv drone batteries that's actually using the inverter to power it and probably down converting it to then power the batteries which is always frustrating whenever you plug one of these 240 volt things in it's always reducing the power that's actually going to the batteries but We've got that running and that has had a more significant impact on the time that this thing will last compared to the others using the inverter. So it's now pulling 114 watts and it's saying we've got about three hours and 20 minutes running at this current rate. So I did think the FPV drone batteries because they are pretty compressed lithium batteries themselves would suck a lot of power from this thing. But still, you're not going to leave this charging for three hours and then another USB, which should be charging our Mavic 3 drone batteries. So once again, USB, so much less power, that's brought us up to 125 watts. So if you're plugging USB things into this or 12 volt things, this thing will go forever. If you do have to use the inverter and power really heavy power requirement things like an FPV drone battery, it cuts that time down from 99 hours down to three and a half. So obviously we're gonna be using that on for three and a half, but when you need to charge it, it's nice to know that it has the power to charge those and this should charge really quickly. So everything else is on and we are juiced up. Let's see how long this lasts. And with everything charged, it's time to show you what makes this so special for us. It's not the fact that we can charge our devices while camping, it's what we can do with that power. So with everything running at 100, we get amongst it to capture our memories of this special place. And for us, that's priceless. charge three FPV drone batteries and it still looks like it's got tons of battery. Still with everything charging, it's only down to 66%. So that's three 
these bad boys, which are lithium batteries as well, and take a lot of charge. We've got sunshine and rain. We're gonna get a rainbow somewhere. Yeah. It looks pretty cool. The ocean looks, oh, there's a rainbow behind us over there. Oh. Uh, it looks pretty mysterious. You've got like very kind of misty glow everywhere. Sun's out, but we are getting wet, so. What can you do? What can you do? This is being outdoors, I guess. Sun will always come out the morning that you leave. But I wanted to have a look at the EcoFlow and see how it's doing. We've got a phone on charge, but we've charged everything else. All the drone batteries are charged, the Sony batteries are charged, and it's on 41% remaining. That's nuts. So in an entire camping trip where we've had it going full, we've had everything charging pretty much all the time only use 59% of the battery in two days. So I wanted to kind of summarize with the fact that I'm actually using this thing every day and I didn't expect to be. I kind of thought this would be something that we would take when we went off-grid camping and not when we had the van, but because it charges in the car and it's you know got a great amount of battery capacity, I do find that I'm using it to charge everything in the van that just needs a quick charge or I need to work on something independently of what Sophie's doing or what she's powering. You know, if we've got the Starlink and other things on our inverter in the van, and our laptops and our screens, it can really drain our batteries quickly, especially when there's no sun out. So I'm finding I'm putting this on and kind of having a guilt-free three, four, five hours of editing and not having to worry about what anyone else is doing. So thought that's worth talking about. If I was to get another one, I would probably go the upgrade. More battery capacity is always better. However, it does cost you more. So that's the trade-off. I can't really fault it. The only thing that I can't comment on because we've only been using it for a couple of weeks is just what the batteries are gonna be like in 10 years and whether or not they still hold their 80% charge like they claim. But I guess for that, you'll just have to wait for 10 years and I'll let you know if it works. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will let you know if it works in 10 years. But if, if I'm still here and I'm still doing this, I'll let you know if the battery still held up in 10 years. If it's still held up in five years, I'll be happy to be honest. So yeah, no complaints so far. Definitely be keeping it, definitely be using it every single day. And yeah, I'll check back in if anything changes. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions or want to share your thoughts, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until next time, happy exploring and here's to new adventures. Different. This is being